Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? I don't know about you, Astro Lover, but I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way. One more time. I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way. (laughs) No, I'm not going to wash my man out of my hair because I love my man. But anything, let's substitute man in that little jingle, that little jingle. Let's substitute man for anything that doesn't serve my freaking goals, dreams, ambitions, visions for the for the big picture of my life. Anything that doesn't serve that and is not in service to my overall and greater good, I'm going to send it on its way. <laughs> 
Welcome to the podcast for the week of October 16th through the 22nd, 2023. Here to look at the stars of this week and last week so that we can learn from astrology in motion. Now, I am not going to front with you about this week. This week, the notes I took when I was mapping out all the aspects, the the literal first line that came to me was, this is a bitch of a week. (laughs) And I say that for several reasons this week. Now, keep in mind, we all have free will, right? And perspective is key. So there, although I'm saying this is a bitch of a week, I just want to remind you a little mental plug that you have free will. And if you, if you're willing and able to flip your perspective on what a annoying quincunx kind of aspect is 150 degree angle and astro speak um or or you might hear in conjunct um those are interchangeable if you're willing to flip your perspective on what's annoying what's frustrating and kind of look for the silver lining look for the mustard seed of wisdom the little nugget of like philosophy the nugget of your belief system, your, the, just little nuggets, little nuggets of of wisdom that's been passed on from the ancients. If you're willing to find that and look at that and flip that, then the magic moments that are astrologically sprinkled into this week actually might magnify. So just keep in mind... That, yes, the energy, cosmically speaking, for the most part. Now, I I do, I am going to reiterate. There are magic moments sprinkled into this week. But those of you that have been here for a long time, you know that squares and quincunxes, those aspects are just, they're activating, but they're also aggravating. But we've got Mercury doing some things. We've got the Sun making some hmm, some things, and we've got the Sun and Mercury coming together. That usually is when people are just so self righteous. It is absolutely unreal how much on their high horse they can be. Uh, so we got to watch out for that. Um, the weekend is a mixed bag of magic. Um, some of which is activating, aggravating, separating, frustrating, but also could be really good for clearing shit out. So we're, we got a lot to talk about when it comes to this week, but let's just take a look at last week. Let's go through some of like the major aspects and some of the things that popped up in my own personal life, and I share... I share myself, I use myself as an example, so that you can see how things really do play out on like a mundane level, Um, because just because I'm your cosmic coach doesn't mean that, you know, this shit ain't happening to me. (laughs) It most certainly is, Um, but then also I've got a couple notes here from just things I noticed online and kind of what's, you know, what's popping up. So if we... Go back to, and if you're a note taker, I highly encourage you to take notes at the end of each day. I'm not asking you to be like a thorough journal person. By all means, if you are, journal your life away. I bullet point every single day. So sometimes when I'm really sitting here at the desk and and I'm locked in, as certain things come to mind as my, you know, creativity kind of flows and I'm in lockstep with, you know, with work and flow and all of that, I, I'll flip open my my scheduler and I'll do like, oh, okay. And I did that last week and I'm going to tell you about it. Um, and I'll just put a bullet point like idea colon, what about this? And then, you know, so I get an idea when I look back at these dates because the planets work in patterns and cycles and you better believe the moon is all one big pattern and cycle. And those of you that are on the daily podcast, you know. 
You know, we track the moon because she really dictates the daily flow. And so we get a lot of information. We extract a lot of really good intel when we are working in sync with the moon. It's just just on her own. And that's why I incorporate those daily moon messages in a daily dose because working with her and how she's working with other planets, you really you really start to unlock like some of the mysteries of like like the paradox of of the life experience period, right? Because what if the planets are making quote unquote awful aspects, but the moon is making supportive aspects? How do you work with that and live with that? That's why we talk about the moon and all her magic. So last week, we had at the top of the week on Monday, October 9th, we had the Venus-Saturn opposition. Now, Venus was freshly in Virgo. A sign, remember, it's, that's she's in her fall in Virgo. She does not like Virgo. Okay, not that she doesn't like it. She's not comfortable in Virgo because if you think of Venus and Taurus and Libra, you know, she's, in, she's art bay. She's beauty bay. She's aesthetic. She's experience and luxury and luxuriating in whatever way speaks to her, right? Because luxury for me ain't necessarily luxury for you. And when she comes into an opposition with Saturn and Pisces, uh, you know, Saturn not really comfortable in Pisces either because Pisces is Neptune. It's boundaryless, and Saturn's all about boundaries and putting form and structure and so Saturn in Pisces for his two and a half year jaunt here is really looking to ground something that's not used to having form and structure so when you got Saturn who I call the astro dad you know he's daddy coming in and being like excuse me you didn't do what you were supposed to do or you're not being disciplined you're not being responsible hilarious when I tell you what um (laughs) What, uh, what, what, how these things showed up for me. So, one thing that I did on Monday that wasn't planned, but when I was like, God, why do I feel this call to do this? I was like, Oh, Venus Saturn opposition. I deleted some of my extra Instagram accounts and I just, I needed the, I needed the cleanse. Like, I had at that time before I did this, I had five Instagram accounts. I have my my name as one, which is all my like creative work as a creative director and as a dancer and a movement coach um, and just more like the fun day-to-day stuff. And then I have Drunk Astrology, obviously. But my dog had an Instagram um, I, back when I was like doing styling – um, just hardcore. I, I had a whole page for my styling. Uh, my partner and I, we had our own Instagram account. And it was just like, okay, this is a lot to manage and the notifications drive me crazy. Hello, sun, moon, mer- uh, sun, moon, rising Virgo. <laughs> That's me. Um, I, I can't stand all the notifications. So anyway, deleted the, the additional three accounts, got rid of them, a little digital cleansing. Then... Where is... Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just... Any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust, So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already. But you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, 
I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay? I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, I'm not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert about how to Feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. I'm not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking... To spiritual folks, I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming Every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your, your um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by... Using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. Oh, and that's actually kind of funny because I... I I didn't have it wasn't a hard conversation. It was it wasn't a tough conversation, but I kind of like I don't want to say I slammed dunk I didn't slam dunk a friend, but I kind of like pressured her into like, "Hey, listen, I think you should do it. I think you should do this with your your creative <laughs> you, you as a creative artist like, here, I had I figured it out. Here's the answer. Like, do this. Stop relying on other people and do this with the people that are actually supportive. Here, I already figured it out for you and I'm going to be your creative director." <laughs> So I kind of like, I was daddy there in that situation, but you know, she loves me, so it's fine. (laughs) Um, One of the ways I worked with this in a productive way was updating my LinkedIn. Um, I had made Drunk Astrology its own page on LinkedIn, but I didn't have any personal connections on my, on like my name, LinkedIn, uh, when I first signed up for it. So I... Went back and just made continuously making more um, updates to it. Now that I can, like, oh, I was like, okay, cool. I can add the logo. I can add, you know, just so just slowly like putting some structure and form there on LinkedIn. So, Drunk Astrology as a business has presence on that platform. Um, and <laughs> here's one of the annoying things. You know, Venus ruling money. Um, and Saturn, you know, oh, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Um, I picked up my check from the Line Hotel from doing readings there every week um, late. Uh, I usually pick it up on a Friday, and I picked it up on Saturday, and because I uh, did that, 
Um, I couldn't, the, the money, I, I deposited it on, on mobile, but it wouldn't go through until Wednesday. So then um, it was like one of those annoying things where things were coming, like all the withdrawals were coming out, the automatic withdrawals. And it was like, oh, I'm supposed to have the money in there, but I don't because my check won't post because I didn't pick it up when I was supposed to. <laughs> So there was that um, good Saturn and Pisces work. I did a great meditation on Tuesday. Um, let me see here. And and then it's funny because now we're going to get into this the, the other aspects from last week. Pluto stationed on Tuesday the 10th, but also we had a Sun Chiron opposition late night on Tuesday. And I had kind of a a wake up call and we're going to add the eclipse energy on top of this because last week you know building up to the libra new moon solar eclipse energy was getting heightened but i kind of had like a, a an emotional wake up call from a friend of mine um about current events and it was kind of like oh shish kebabi like i you know i need to be more present i need to you know i i get into my like bubble over here and workflow and you know, I mean, I wake up and have talk about like routine and structure to running drunk astrology as a business, you know, so I really had my head down and just kind of in my own world and, you know, just was a little, a little unaware, you know, kind of like blissfully ignorant. And so I had a wake up call. And, you know, the, the next day, like we, you know, we got to like, work it through and hash it out and everything. And it was and it was really good. Um, but one of the things that has been in the zeitgeist over the last week from a macro standpoint is, and this is Pluto secrets, Libra new moon solar eclipse of a relationship and Sun Chiron opposition of a separation. But Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, man, it's not really that it was like news news because they have talked about their living arrangement and things and like red table talk and things, but apparently Jada's now officially like saying we have been separated since 2016. So that is all of that energy, like the main points, the main highlights of last week, all in one update, right? You've got Pluto, the planet of secrets, mysteries, things, things hidden under the rug or just kind of things hidden in general stationing direct. So whenever a planet stops, their energy intensifies so you've got secrets coming out. You've got that Libra solar eclipse, which is uh, on the south node of releasing, ending something. So now you've got this whole secret of the relationship. Um, so what a thing to wake up to on Wednesday. I was like, oh, snap. Okay, well, there's that. And then here's a really cool thing. And this is actually going to um, go right into um, the news board things you know i only have a few items this week um but on friday the mars saturn trine mars moved into scorpio last week uh where he he gets passionate and bold and he wants to you know he's not wasting time mars and scorpio this is one of his this is his water domicile meaning this is the sign that he likes this is his home turf um but in his water expression which is all about like that passion soul alignment um, in Aries, he's in his fire domicile where he is, you know, the god of war and strategy and action, motivation, and energy. So in Scorpio, trining Saturn and Pisces, bringing form and structure to spirituality, bringing form and structure to dreams and vision, like really taking action and putting a plan together uh, to making something official. So here's what's funny. And it's just how this shit works. But Friday morning... I woke up and I was like, hey, I have this like idea for daily dosers. Like, you know, because I'm just always looking to add more and more value to that daily dose um, subscription. And so I was like, and I wrote this down. I was at my desk, you know, in my flow and book was open and was just like, I wonder if like there's there's a need or a an interest in like a monthly club that's subscription based um like you know we can read books in the spiritual field you know some kind of like thing where we do that right so it's like like at first it was like is this daily dose and i was like no i don't think this is daily dose i think this is something separate like this is something like like reading a book together 
because a lot of people over the years have reached out to me for book recommendations. You know, can you point me in the right direction um, of a good book to like get into learning astrology for myself or deepening my understanding of my own astrology? So I, I mean, I have a, an apartment full of books, um, and some of which I, I use as like textbooks, and I reference all the time. So. I I wrote that down and was like, all right, I mean, that's something to consider, but, you know, I'm just going to keep moving on with my day. Then, same day. Now, this is also my Libra new moon solar eclipse in my second house of work and finances. Day before the eclipse, energy gets heightened, right? And also, so does your intuition. Things come, you know, so it's like, okay, bam, in the morning I had the intuitive hit. Well, that afternoon... Instagram sends me a freaking email and says, we'd like to invite you to try subscriptions on Instagram. And immediately, I was like, oh my freaking God. This is and could be the book club. This could be the Cosmic Book Club. And I just like, and it all like rushed. And this is the energy of eclipses because it just rushes things forward. So I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I text some of my VIPs. I I sent Herman like a voice note, like, oh my God, do you, like, what do you think? Like, this could this be cool? And then I was like, well, let me talk to everybody. Let me not just talk to like a small group. Let me like, so then I went to my stories and put a poll up. Like, would you be interested in a, in a cosmic book club? Because I think that we could do this and it could be really cool and be simple because it's all on Instagram. We're all already on Instagram. And when you're a subscriber, the algorithm doesn't F with you like it does. And, you know, the content actually gets delivered. Like I subscribe to my good friend Elise Joan and I see all her stories. I see all her updates. Anytime she does like a live on Instagram that's just for subscribers, it's easy to find, easy to locate. So, It was like, it all rushed to me like, oh my God. And then I was like, well, Instagram can't be trusted in terms of like getting the poll out in my stories. So then I wrote a newsletter (laughs) or I wrote an e-blast to everyone that's on the newsletter. It was like, would you be into this thing? And the combination of it all, and this is also Pluto stationing to move forward in my fifth house in Capricorn, my fifth house of creative expression and self-expression and, you know, any, anything creative. Um, you know, so it's like, oh, here comes like here comes like the the, the opening because Pluto retrograde can kind of put you in, put that energy in the shadow. So it's like, oh, my gosh, here's an opportunity. And it's amazing. Pluto's in Capricorn, which is work uh, and structure and form. So I sent everything out. And I have this, this, uh, this not like a wait list, but I have a list growing of like, and if I reach a certain number of interest, then I'm going to make this book club happen in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to get going on Instagram subscriptions. So this is why I say this leads right into the news board for this week um, because is a cosmic book club something that you'd be interested in? Go, to, go down in the show notes. And send me a message to let me know. I have a link there that that you can just send me a message real quick and easy because I want to know. I'm going to see, I'm going to have this list that's just going to, you know, I'm just putting a list together because if there's enough interest and I see this being like not just books based in astrology, but in on the oracles, meditation, um, you know, spirituality, spiritual expansion, like everything in the self-improvement spiritual lens is up, right? And, you know, I, I, I see us like voting on like, okay, is this the next book that we want to do? Now, I already know what book number one is. If this happens, book number one is going to literally be the book that it's my number one top recommended book to anyone that's ever reached out to me about like, where should I start? It's this book, and it's it's working with the planets, and I just honestly, I just I love this book so freaking much, and I use it, um, I reference it all the time, especially when I'm prepared for the year ahead, like which which is what I'm moving into doing for 2024, um, you know, to get the essence, like what planets are really like 
running the game? What, what what's really like? What are the planets that are really on the front line for any given year? And like to go, I go back to this book to like, oh yes, like the essence of these planets and their energies. Like so, this these are the big themes, you know. So anyway, I already know that that's that would be a thing. So if you are in to the idea of having a cosmic book club that we would run through Instagram subscriptions, doesn't get any easier than that. Scroll down and send me a message and let me know because if I don't get enough interest, I can't add another thing. But if there's enough interest and we're all on board and y- y'all tell me like hell yeah without a shadow of a doubt, I'm I want to do it. Then I'm gonna get it going. I'm gonna set it all up and we'll start reading some freaking books and improving our lives and understanding astrology and especially in the astrology ones. Especially the ones that I've already read and and some of which that I use like as a textbook. They're not textbooks, but I use them like that. Um, those I, I'm going to teach too. You know what I mean? So I can break things down in, in you know layman's terms, in simpler terms, so that you're they're easier to understand. So I don't want anyone to get like – don't get discouraged if like you, you don't have to know anything. You literally – all you need is the – the will and the willingness to improve your life. That's all you need. And the rest we'll take care of. Okay? Second thing on the news board items. Payment plans are available for readings. I told you last week that the reading books are available. I want to let you know that payment plans are available through PayPal. They have all kinds of different things. Like you can split payments between different cards. You can pay in four you can um, you can actually split into monthly payments, like six monthly payments. So it makes things way easier. So if a reading is something that is on your mind and these eclipses are riling things up for you and you want to understand things on a deeper level, then payment plans, bam, they're available. And last but not least, I have an eclipse bonus episode that I added to Daily Dose of Stars last week. When I, It goes hard. Okay, it goes hard to understand where we've come from because, like, we look at the last time these eclipses took place the Aries North Node and the Libra South Node. I believe all of you listening here are old enough to have um, lived through this cycle. And if you're not, you can get to talk to your parents or loved ones. But you've lived through this cycle before and you can find so much information about, you can project forward. By looking back, when it comes to eclipses, oh yes, oh yes, there is so much nugget. There's so many nuggets of wisdom and understanding. Um, And you have the chance to change the narrative. So if you look back during the last time the nodes were in Aries Libra, and you don't like what you see, that's okay. Because now it's like you get to strike up a conversation with, that earlier version of you, the younger version of you, and say, okay, I'm going to tell you like what I've learned over the, the, this last patch of time, since that time, and, I, and, and we're going to change that ish. We're not going to respond the same way. We're not going to do the same thing like we did then. So there's a lot of understanding there, especially in terms of your own personal patterns, your own personal behavior, and things that you can control, baby. The energy is all there, and I give you the dates moving ahead um, because we have there's just, there's a lot of information there. And this week, I'm excited about this week's bonus episode for Daily Dose because I'm going to share my dartboard technique. Libra is all about relationships, and the eclipse of, the eclipse of it all could be relationships that don't um, that might might not be working, but that doesn't mean that it's black and white and it. And it And as extreme as you're cut off, you know, these are the dartboard technique is about making changes within yourself and changes within your perspective when it comes to all your relationships. And it empowers you to really decide where people fit and where they don't. And just because someone doesn't fit, like, you know, maybe they're not. Maybe they're not bestie material now. Maybe they used to be, but now there's a there's a different set of expectations, and and so there's a there's a there's an, an internal shift that you can make to make that dynamic so much more fulfilling and so much 
more clear, more honest, and more genuine and more authentic. So it's a, it's a great technique. I've learned it from like one of my like best friends. It's like she's like my guru, um, and she's just she's just so friggin' smart, and she's a philosopher, and she's just like she, she's next level. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sharing that as the bonus episode this week, the dartboard technique for reorganizing your relationships. It's a game changer, actually a life changer. It saved my relationship with my parents. I'm just going to say that. Okay? All right. Done with that. Let's just quickly run through the moons, and then we're going to get to the planets, and then we're going to get you the hell out of here. On Monday, the moon is in Scorpio, so we talked about that uh, last week because it was over the weekend as well. Scorpio moons, you know, good for finances, good for sex, good for caving, just kind of like disappearing and hiding. Um... There's more moon messages um, in Daily Dose. Then Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we've got the moon in Sagittarius, a sign that the moon loves being in, exploration, travel, um, education, big themes there. Then we've got the moon in Cap Friday, Saturday, work, isolation. Yes, because uh, a, a Cap moon doesn't like being in Capricorn. Um, She's in detriment there because the opposite sign of cancer is her domicile. That's where she that's where she loves being. Uh, But the moon in cap um, can be great for getting work done and, you know, kind of like uh, zeroing in on work. But there is an isolation slash depressive quality that can come with that um, can come with that energy. So just keep that in mind. And then on Sunday, the moon's in Aquarius and that takes us into next week. Um, uh, moon and Aquarius, great for friends and groups and events. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind, uh, when you're planning your week ahead. Now, planetary wise, this is when we get into that biatch energy. All right. So on Tuesday, we've got Mercury. Who is, is she, is he? No. Okay. All right. Perfect. Sorry. I had to look at my aspects further down. Mercury and Libra. Quinn Kunks is Uranus and Taurus. So we can imagine there that because this is Venus, Venus, Venus. Mercury's in Libra, Uranus is in Taurus, both signs that Venus rules. We can imagine that there is some kind of adjusting conversation around relationships or uh, some kind of unexpected change that needs to happen. Quinn Kunks is and or in conjuncts. You can use either, either, either word. Um suggests that there's some kind of tweaks that need to be made. There is some kind of honing in, uh, phoning it in a little bit. But I I look at them as eye-roll aspects. They're annoying. They're frustrating. Um, but where there's there's room for finding the silver lining, right? So, you know, you might have a conversation, uh, you know, kind of like a an annoying conversation on Tuesday. Um, but just, just keep, just ask yourself like where, where, where do I need to adjust? So Tuesday got to adjust something Wednesday. That energy just keeps on rocking because the sun in Libra quincunx is Neptune in Pisces. Now Neptune in Pisces is fog, lack of clarity, confusion, sun in Libra, right? Where are things unclear in relationships? Now this is a this is an aspect with the sun, so it kind of pervades all day. So, whether it's a clarifying conversation in partnership or a clarification within yourself when it comes to your your dreams and your vision, um, you know, really trying to find clarity in something or someone, and it you might not you you might not get it. So you got to keep that in mind, but just kind of say, what are you getting and go from there, you know, judge from that right now. It doesn't mean it's, you, this shouldn't be like an end all be all, but just keep that in mind that if you don't get the clarity you're looking for, if things are just in general, like a little unclear to you, that'll likely clear up by the weekend. On Thursday, now we, we get a double dose of that because the sun does it on Wednesday. Mercury does it. Same thing, Quincunx and Neptune, trying to figure things out, trying to get clarity. 
may or may not come, but hopefully by the weekend, uh, there are some there's some good squares that I think can activate this energy and clear things up a bit more. But also, we have the Sun and Mercury coming into a conjunction late Thursday night. You got to watch for this. Sun in Libra can be hot-headed. Mercury in Libra can definitely be hot-headed. And they, it's an energy that can really like fly off the handle. So self-righteousness can be rampant. Uh, people can really be on one. Um, now, it could also spark an agreement in partnerships, right? This The conjunctions can also be like contracts. So where are you willing to make a commitment in partnerships? You know, is it, is it a partnership with your business? Is it a partnership with your romantic partner? Is it a commitment or contract with, with work, with friends, with family? Um, it's a coming together, but just beware, Mercury that close to the sun can be real hot-headed. So if you have any kind of heated conversations towards the later half of the week, I would suggest, honestly, I would suggest like trying to get to Sunday and beyond because then the energy that flows through the rest of the weekend is a mixed bag. So experiences can be very multi-dimensional and multi-layered. And let's talk about why. Friday the 20th, Mercury in Libra has a square to Pluto in Capricorn. Now, that's activating and aggravating. It's separating and frustrating, but well, let me add this too. On Saturday, the sun does it too. So Friday, Saturday have that separative, frustrating quality, but it's also great for clearing things out and, and thrusting yourself into action. So this can be like a spiritual offloading, but it can also be a physical offloading. What you know, I have one drawer in particular that has been driving me crazy. It's my the drawer with all my shirts. And it's like it it's hard to close the drawer. Now I have to like push down and I don't like that. I don't like squeezing myself into I don't like fitting like having to fit myself inside a space. I I don't like that. So this is great energy to tackle some kind of something that, that it's like that. Like I have this one drawer, it's my enemy. And uh, I'm ready to I'm ready to get get in there and exercise some of this stuff. <laughs> so as much as it can be in because it's Mercury, it's Libra energy. Sorry, because it's Libra energy. There can be partnerships where they're separating and activating and frustrating you. Um, but at the same time, this could be like an offload. Uh, I mean, I guess you can apply that too to relationships. You know. If, relationship ain't cutting it for you <laughs> mercury and sun squaring pluto could definitely be like yep um and that's also going to activate some of that secrecy mystery energy things that are unclear like with the sun and mercury nep quincunx to neptune um these can now come in like kind of unearth things that you didn't see or that were laying hidden they were dormant uh, you, you didn't want to look at them, or you couldn't see them, and now these squares can activate them. Now, we also have a Capricorn quarter moon on Saturday, halfway point between the Libra new moon solar eclipse and the Taurus full moon lunar eclipse next week. Form and structure, name of the game. Quarter moons are balancing acts. How can you bring form and structure? What needs to go? What, you know, it, this is really like getting real. Capricorn ruled by Saturn, looking at. Let's get real. You know, what needs to go? What needs to stay? What? Where do I need more form and structure? Venus actually kind of saves the day on Saturday because she has a juicy trine to Jupiter. Venus in Virgo, Jupiter in Taurus, Earth and Earth energy. This is great work energy, blessings of work, of finding, of money. Um, you know, this is really, this is a good luck charm. This is a good luck um, aspect. So that's why I say it's a multidimensional experience this weekend. <laughs> I mean, life is in general, isn't it? But this weekend in particular, like the Sun-Mercury squares and then the Capricorn quarter moon, which is a sun and moon square. You know, th these are all like frustrating and separating and, and aggravating, and, but, but activating. So, I mean, it is a thrust into action. There is that, but there there is a stressful component to that, to all of those energies. And then Venus is like, but looky here. Look at this dopamine dose I've got for you. <laughs> here's some money. Here's some connection. Here's some balance. Here's some beauty. 
here, enjoy me, luxuriate in me. <laughs> so there's that experience too. Then late at night, Saturday, now this is even going into Sunday too, Mercury enters Scorpio. So he's out of the balance beams and he's out trying to like figure out how to make a decision in Libra and bring restore some balance. And now he he dives in deep. Now Mercury in water, not exactly the happiest because God of communication in a water sign, he's more swimming, right? So he's swimming in emotions that doesn't necessarily have the words to express himself. But he does, on Sunday, have a trine to Saturn in Pisces. So that's a great fantasy moment. That's a great, like, uh, putting words to, you know, actually that might be a good day for um, following up on book club things for me. You know, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how this pans out because Mars had his trine to Saturn. Now Mercury's coming. So now it's like, all right. So you know what? Actually, let's. I'm going to put astrology in motion in real time. On Sunday, I'll update everybody with where we're at with the book club and if we're, if we're doing it or if we're not. So Sunday, let me make a note right now. Um, announce book club update. Okay, so I'm going to give everybody a week to let me know, and I'll gather how much interest there is in the book club, and if it's a go, then we'll do it. Um, And Sunday, uh, that podcast, I'll I'll let you know where we're at with the interest. Um, And there's astrology in real time and real motion, and that's it. That's actually the... um, that's the last major aspect to talk about on Sunday. Uh, more to be covered in Daily Dose. But there you have it, folks. There's your week. Yes, it can be a bitch of a week, but you've got free will. And there's also magic moments cosmically sprinkled in all around. Perspective is key, people. I'm going to leave you with this one message. Now, on Daily Dose, I I, I do an oracle message um, at, at the end of every single episode, every single day. Um, so for this week, I'm going to leave you with an oracle message. Um, and this is coming from my art oracle deck, which is like my favorite deck to, to use right now because we're in Libra season. It's about the arts. So this is all about um, all different artists and messages that come from their, their history and their work. But this message is, some things are whole only when they shatter. Take that with you. Some things are whole only when they shatter. Okay? Break barriers, baby. You can do it this week. I will see you on the gram. I'll see you in the daily doses. I'll see you in your inbox. And uh, that's it. You know how to get in touch with me. Scroll down. Check them show notes. Let me know about the book club. I'll holla. Bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time, from learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles to seeing it in real time in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.